me start. All right, so this is um, week nine. And today kind of is the last class in terms of um, what we are going to learn after that it's going to, we are going to learn from your own project. So I'll, we'll discuss each project in the class and uh, I'll give you feedback while in the class. So it will be mostly discussion session in class, uh, next class. And the final weeks will be mostly presentations. Your presentation, that discussion, so that everybody learn from your project. Before um, the presentation didn't have much discussion because we didn't have much time. But now we have enough time because we finished the syllabus today. And that way we, we can dedicate the entire last week as opposed to just one class for presentations. So you have option to present in class or you can record that before and we'll watch it um, in the class. So I'll suggest that present in the class is just the, because you are here. But I understand if you, many of you could not join the class in time because different time zone, um, you can just pre-record it and we'll, we'll uh, play it and then we'll discuss the projects right in the class. Okay, so the office hours, uh, again, I don't put any office hour like Wednesday. The reason is I expect this, is, this office hour will be mostly for the groups. Um, the reason there is no homework due, there is nothing due. So I just don't see the reason of uh, a specific time because I know that not everybody can make that time. So send me an email if you want to meet. Quiz four will be released on Thursday. That will be on permeable payments, green roof and wetland. That's all we discuss um, on the last week. So nothing from this week material. Today's material is not part of the quiz. <clears throat> Homework five, initially I thought you can submit, but let's, let's do it in the class. That way you guys can learn and we can watch how to do it. And I'll give you different questions so that you can learn it. Uh, just input different and then we can try uh, see how it works so that we'll do next class so there's no submission there's nothing just uh, we'll just do it at class that's related to um, uh, storm water modeling that's why i want to do it in the class too um, project uh, complete draft is due on week nine at the end of this week so uh, typically it's a thursday but you know as i said i am not going to read until monday so you can go ahead and submit until Sunday night. And um, Monday, Srinan and me will sit through and just read all the um, draft together and give comments quickly because I want you guys to get the comments as soon as possible so that you can even finish the draft um, or the final report in the week 10. That way you don't have to even worry about the finals week where you will be busy with other finals as well as your if you're graduating, you have other things to do. Um, so that's all for the announcement. So I just want to say that um, Renan will let me know how you guys wrote it. So those are the things he's recording, uh, week four to six, eight, uh, whether you discuss all that, you know, he's probably giving you feedback. Um, but project draft is something that I'll look uh, A to G. Uh, so that's something, uh, send me email, copy Renan, because I'm the one who's gonna read it. Uh, so send me the link for project draft by Sunday night, at least on Monday morning, I should have it. <clears throat> Final draft is due. Um, uh, once I give you the uh, comments back, you can send me any times before the finals weeks are over. Uh, so that means the Friday of the finals. Um, but you can submit any time, as I said, you, you can submit earlier. The last thing is stormwater modeling. Um, that's something we're going to learn. Um, and I just want to highlight that you are not going to learn how to model storm water. The reason is I'm not providing you those, those how to use those method. I'm just going to go, go overview of what different models are out there because different companies use different model. And so my original goal was to have one of the company members uh, that are my colleagues or even ex -students, students to come to the class and actually show you how to do it. And um, but you now then we realized that uh, many of the mod models are run in Windows, not Mac. And we tried that in one time, so many students could not run it in their Mac. Uh, so it's, it was not that helpful. Uh, so that's why you know, we are looking for something that doesn't require any kind of um, operating system. We can run on, on web, web browser. 
So those kind of model we are looking for. And uh, once we have something like that, we'll integrate to this class. So until then, we'll just explain what different models are, what you can do, so that when you go to work in a stormwater design firm, you are not surprised by you know hearing all these models. And at least you know what those models do. Uh, so the very first half, we'll discuss that. And the second half, uh, this is a discussion session. That means from five o'clock onward, we'll discuss your project. So I'll be here um, and we make different groups or different rooms. And uh, each room will be your project. So that means you, you know, you can, you can either you know, just discuss all together without going into a room if you, if you don't mind sharing to the rest of the class, or we can do individually uh, with your groups. <clears throat> So first is stormwater management models. Um, Professor? Yeah? Um, I wanted to ask for the paper as well as the presentation, where do we submit it? Um, oh, I see. You send me email. OK, so both the paper and the presentation slides be sent. So usually, I recommend you guys to use Google Slides so you have the yeah. link there. So that means you just send me the link. You don't have to attach it. That way, what happens is if you have lots of pictures and the size is pretty big, you don't have to worry about emails. And second, you can continue to update um, the slides okay. after even you send me emails. Sounds good. OK, thank you, Professor. What day should we try to send you those slides by? Uh, Slides, you, you, that's optional. So you should send me uh, if you need my help. Uh, uh, you are presenting on next Tuesday and Thursday, one of those days. So at least give me one day so that I can look at it and uh, give you some comments back very quickly. It takes like five to 10 minutes. I, I don't spend too long. I'll just uh, tell you roughly how to improve it. Uh, so as soon as you send me, I can just give it to you. So I would say that if you, if you are presenting on Tuesday, send me my um, Monday noon. That way I can give you some comments and you have time to actually work on it. Or Monday afternoon is fine because I'll give you on Monday night and then on Tuesday until 4 p.m. you have time to just edit quickly. All right. Well, also, is it 10 minutes max or? So 10 to 12 minutes, um, don't go more than that because the, the reason we fix 12 minutes is most of the presentation in conference are around 12 minutes. So uh, you don't get much more time than that to describe your project. Uh, so that means okay. you, know, you get a practice here. And definitely not okay. more than, you know, if it is 15 minutes, it's too late. It's just uh, way too much. You lose interest in people. And how about citations? Do we need citations? On the slide? Yeah. Well, that's, a, you know, if you saw a figure, that's just the, the source has to be mentioned, right? So you okay. don't have to write citation for statement, but any figures, you got to tell where the source are, unless it's original, yours. And if you okay. get it from Google, you can just write Google. And if you get it from manuscript, that's you should true. mention that. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so learning objective. Um, we uh, Stormwater modeling is the integral part of the green infrastructure design. Even before you design green infrastructures, you got to route how much stormwater is going to be there because unless you collect stormwater, you're not going to treat it. And it's, um, it's not like you will uh, treat stormwater every location. So you will treat at different locations. And each locations are strategically designed to receive stormwater from a catchment. So how do you know where the stormwater is to come? Uh, how much stormwater you're going to receive? So for those kind of decision, it's important to uh, know the modeling. And this modeling is not like you know you do numerical modeling. It's already built in programs. In there are softwares developed by EPA, USDA, and they use those concepts that we learned in this class to develop uh, modeling tools. So those modeling you learn, it doesn't take long to learn a specific models. Those handouts or those uh, manuals are always online. Usually when you start working in a company, they'll give you training for those. <clears throat> so you don't require to know this thing before. 
Uh, but what I really want you guys to know is what models are there, what models can do versus what they cannot do. Because some models, they can do work quantity as well as quality. But some models, they don't do quality. Uh, quality means container removal. So one of the um, most used model is SWIM. Uh, I, that's the model that LA County doesn't use it, unfortunately, um, but um, they have different versions. But this is the most standard version, storm water management model, that's what they call it. It's a developed by EPA. You can check that all together. Uh, so in next 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I'll walk you through some models. At least we'll tell you what those are and how they work when you need them. Um, so, um, if you want to think about different types of green infrastructure projects for your class, you know, and approach it for different scenario, uh, this is the link I just put you uh, so that you can check your draft uh, just in case if useful, because I keep referring the same link all the time. Um, so, okay, um, so why do you need models? Uh, as I said, um, the, the su success of any green infrastructure design depends on how much storm water it receives. So that depends on types of land, uh, land use. Uh, you know that the core numbers or, or runoff coefficient will vary based on land use. It also vary based on the climate, rainfall patterns. So how different rainfall patterns will create a certain kind of uh, runoff, um, something that you got to do, use uh, your models. And they use unit hydrograph for those locations to calculate that flow at that point. So that's what we are going to do actually next class. Use Excel to calculate using um, unit hydrographs to calculate the runoff at any spot. And that way you know that the basic how it works. It's not that difficult. Uh, but then you know, the models are much more complex. They take into account for elevations. They account for a lot of different changes, uh, which you is complicated to do on Excel. Uh, so that's why it will give you some idea. But the basic thing is the quantity of water you going to receive. And that depends on many factors, runoff volume, um, uh, land use, all that is going to be integrated. Then the hydraulic models. Hydraulic model is more on how quickly it will flow. Okay, so hydrologic model is mostly how much quantity. Uh, hydraulic is the speed because you are basically pipe system. It's moving in the pipe system. So you wanted to check whether your pipe system will be exhausted or not. These are useful in a East Coast where you, you are looking for combined sewer overflow. And those are the time you uh, require to understand how much capacity you have and how long before this capacity will be um, exhausted. Uh, so the flow rate, flow velocity, those are the things you are going to calculate routing system. So that way you can see what size of pipe you have to install at different location to, ex to, uh, to, to discharge the storm water quickly. Um, so model that include green infrastructure typically assess how BNB manage the water through the inflow infiltrations and all these other processes that we know. Um, then the last one is water quality modeling. And it's a, it's a really evolving field. Water quality is not very easy to know. The reason is they don't account for amendments, adjourson, all this process that you learn. All they care about is they assign a factors. Let's say if you have a rain garden, 20% or 30% or 90% of the contaminants will be removed by rain garden. So they put that a number, arbitrary numbers that they learn from different system. It's not a mechanistic model. It doesn't say about what's let's say put amendments uh, in a bioinfiltration systems. It treat the same thing by, with amendment, without amendments. The reason is they just have a numbers for those. So most of the water quality benefits is based on the how much water you divert from the runoff and infiltrate into ground. So based on that, they calculate. So it's really not accurate, but it's the best they can do. <clears throat> Um, so it's very, resolution is very low. The reason is I, I decrease the size of the slides after copying it. Uh, but these are things you can find on EPA. There are five different models, as you see, uh, SWC, SWIM are most common. There is uh, other models that, um, that you see. And the links is we given here. You can go uh, watch that YouTube video if you want to. So why don't you watch it? Because it's really, um, 
um, me, let me call, take the, I realized I didn't upload the PDF. Um, so upload as it. So let's watch the model overview because this kind of explain what is model dodge. Um, that way you can <clears throat> you can see those right away. So I'm going to share a different screen and then we can watch that. <clears throat> Um, uh, I'm going to share some screen, share sound. Okay, so um, so this this the model introductions for five minute video that's from EPA website. So will it will explain you different type of infrastructure model that currently being used. Um, Green infrastructure is a cost-effective, resilient approach to managing wet weather impacts that can provide many community benefits. Green infrastructure, like rain gardens, green roofs, urban tree canopy, or bioswales, reduces and treats stormwater at its source, as well as delivering environmental, social, and economic benefits. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has developed a suite of tools that can help reduce the impact of wet weather in your community. Each of these tools requires a different level of expertise and data and can help communities make the best decisions on managing stormwater and the environment. GWiz is an interactive tool designed to provide communities with a fast and easy way to access information about EPA's publicly available green infrastructure tools and resources. You can access educational materials, research, design information, and assessment approaches for green infrastructure based on your specific objective. You will receive a tailored list of tools and resources for the objective you choose. You can also explore GWiz by selecting the topics that interest you and get a customized list of results. GWiz serves a broad range of users, including local communities, states, tribes, and anyone interested in green infrastructure options. The Watershed Management Optimization Support Tool, or WMOST, is a screening model that helps facilitate integrated water management that looks across stormwater drinking water, wastewater, and land conservation programs. The tool screens water resources management options across a watershed or jurisdiction for cost effectiveness as well as environmental and economic sustainability. WMOST helps evaluate green infrastructure as part of the process. The tool also looks at environmental and economic costs, benefits, trade-offs, and co-benefits of various management options. The Visualizing Ecosystem Land Management Assessments Model, or VELMA, helps assess the effectiveness of green infrastructure for improving water quality in streams, rivers, and estuaries. The tool evaluates and predicts the effectiveness of riparian buffers, cover crops, and other green infrastructure. It also estimates potential ecosystem service co-benefits and trade-offs, like providing clean water, flood control, or even a habitat for fish and wildlife. This model predicts how green infrastructure controls water flow and what it picks up along the way from plots to basins and over time from days to years. For example, stream nutrient loads can be significantly reduced by adding riparian buffers in areas with shallow groundwater flow. Velma can help determine the effectiveness of those riparian buffers. The stormwater management model is a dynamic hydrology, hydraulic water quality model used around the world by engineers and water resources managers for planning, analysis, and design related to stormwater runoff, combined sanitary sewers, and other drainage systems in urban areas. SWIM can simulate a single storm event or long-term runoff quantity and quality. It's a complex tool and requires some level of modeling experience in an integrated Windows environment. SWIM accounts for various hydrologic processes that produce runoff from urban areas, including rainfall, snow accumulation, and melt, 
interflow between groundwater and the drainage system, and runoff reduction through green infrastructure. It contains a flexible set of hydraulic modeling capabilities used to route runoff and external inflows through the drainage system network of pipes, channels, storage or treatment units, and diversion structures. And the model can estimate the production of pollutant loads associated with the stormwater runoff. SWIM can design and size drainage system components for flood control, map floodplains of natural channel systems, design control strategies for minimizing combined sewer overflows, and control site runoff using green infrastructure. The National Stormwater Calculator and Climate Assessment Tool estimates the annual amount of rainfall and frequency of runoff from a specific site like a parking lot, a house, or a new development site. The desktop application is designed to be used by site developers, land architects, or urban planners. After determining a location's average rainfall and soil composition to get an average runoff amount, the user can apply different green infrastructure techniques like rain gardens, rain harvesting, or porous pavement to reduce runoff amounts. The user can also apply current and future climate implications. These green infrastructure tools provide cost-effective and resilient solutions on a local, state, and regional level for managing stormwater and protecting America's waterways. As you see that um, there are many types of um, modelings. National stormwater models, that's the one I think will be most useful for your projects, but I don't expect you to use it. Just know that there you can say uh, what you're going to use on your um, the specific location, and then you you write that. Um, you see the what benefit it receive. Um, so let's see the... Okay, so we watched this video. So now question is which model to use? Okay, so there are many five models and there are different things you could do. So first one, let's start with the most popular one, stormwater management models. So this is mostly a large scale modeling planning uh, for um, calculating amount of runoff you receive at that spot. So those are usually used for East Coast because you receive a lot of run, run, runoff and you are trying to minimize that combined sewer flow, overflow. So that's why you, you need a very efficient drainage systems. In Los Angeles, you don't have much drainage issues, partly because you know every time it rains, it's a overland flow and goes to those two big channels, um, LA rivers as well as Barna Creek. And you don't have uh, really that much rainfall. So those are, those are the useful tools for uh, for East Coast. Uh, well, you can use it here too, no, whenever needed. National Stormwater Calculator is mostly, you know, that's the where it's it account for. Um, it's basically the um, the the uh, rational method, you know, Q equal to CIA. So it knows the specific land use, what soil condition, what land cover, which is grass area. So that it has the, all the numbers that you already did in your homework. And then it takes the rainfall records and use the unit hydrograph to calculate all that value. And uh, then it also knows that for each type of green infrastructure, how much runoff you can reduce. For instance, you know, it's known for certain areas it will receive 20% uh, of the volume reduction. So those numbers are already fed into the system. So obviously not all biofilters of all green infrastructures are very equal design, but it account for those just uh, uh, on average. Water set management optimization support tool or WMOST is mostly on the large scale, as it says, uh, it account for climates and to see what are the amount of um, water you receive from water shed. So it's not accounting for that individual small area routing, it's mostly the large scale process. Usually you don't need it for urban areas. Visualizing ecosystem for land management assessment model, Velma. So that's the one, um, I think it's most used for nutrient management and contaminant management in the stream. Um, because um, it doesn't account for all kind of green infrastructures, but some of the green infrastructures constant can effectively use 
to remove nutrients. So it's like a grass lawn or grass buffer or wetland. Uh, so it doesn't have every kind of green infrastructure, a very specific type. And so they account for how much pollutant can be removed in the system so that the streams are going to be uh, clean. So this is a very useful tool for uh, TMDL models because you can you can put this value and say that if I put those, uh, it is going to meet the TMDL or it's going to contaminate the process. And the last one, uh, green infrastructure flexible models. Um, it has both uh, water quality as well as quantity. Um, so um, that's the one more um, extensive um, that you can use for all different types of uh, transport modeling. And uh, so that's the one, if you have to use one and learn everything, then that um, the last one is the one you're going to use. Uh, so those, uh, how to use it, what's the different kind of um, methods or the manual. So all that is given in this uh, link that I provide you. So these are all open access. Uh, so you can get those from EPA website and use it. Um, so I think, you know, for SWIM, it's a, I just want to mention that we tried one time, it was window based and many people, many students have Mac, even I don't have window anymore. So it's very difficult for me to use this one uh, to, to run in the class. Um, but if uh, the manuals are given, if you see that link is given, you can download it. And, and use it if you have Windows software. It include eight types of green infrastructures, not all kind, but those eights are pretty common. Um, and um, then which models to use? Um, this is just to show that there are so many models. I just explained only few. Um, and then each, each model has certain benefit and it shows that uh, cross symbols. So the, um, the column number one has all these different models, as I said, yeah, swim, wasp, sustain, all this. See, there are so many models. Um, ICPR, all that. You don't need to know all that. Uh, but point is, you can see that what they do. So, for instance, if you want to look water quality models, these are many models that exist. Um, if you want to do BMP, uh, let's say hydraulic models, then you have four options here. It shows what to use. Uh, hydraulic means mostly pipe. Um, uh, example tutorial, as I said, these are all in, uh, it's given in uh, uh, websites as well as YouTube. So it's really not, using the model is not the difficult part. It's about why you use it and uh, when you use, use what kind of output or troubleshooting. So these, you can find plenty of record recorded materials on YouTube. So it's really, I just give you a couple of them. This is just for, for your own specific use in future if you work in a company or not. Otherwise, you know, you're not using for a project here in this class. You're not running the models. Storm water modeling itself is a class that you have to learn. And you can use your own numerical software or MATLAB to uh, run the code. All right, so how to apply the concept for your specific site now that you learn. Um, so, um, you know, that's a lot of times what you do in a company is that you first decide what's your goal. Is the water quantity or water quality? So that goal has to be very early defined so that way it can determine what models to use. You should have also indication of site conditions, site condition mostly climate, soil conditions, and uh, any other design constraint and that you have to be aware of. So those things you will have to find. And then, um, Identify the review of uh, the pollutant removal processes and potential practice. This is useful um, for, uh, let's say you want to remove nutrients. You need to know what's the source, how you remove it. That way you know exactly what green infrastructures to use because until step one, you don't know really what green infrastructure to install. Um, step three, look for the site constraint. Uh, site constraint means how far deep the groundwater is can we use this green infrastructure, let's say wetland. If you can choose wetland, it remove nutrients, um, but you don't have much space. So that means it's not applicable here. So you have to think of all that aspect of it. And then also you have to see where exactly you are gonna put it. Uh, because the you know, whether you will have a green roof or you will have a green street, all depends on uh, what space you have, uh, what site you have, whether what kind of PMP it can take. 
So you have to also determine the locations. And then once you determine the location, you already know the, the pollutants, that will tell you what kind of BMP you'll use because all BMPs are not effective in every pollutants. Um, and once you have those BMP, you, you size it because you know the amount of volume of water you're going to receive. Then you say, okay, what's the size of BMP? It means how big it will be, how many BMP or the other infrastructures will be used in that locations. <clears throat> Then you, once you have that one, you put them together and, and, and disc, uh, review the criteria of operation and constructions. Uh, so this, this link that I saw in the, in the table or the slides, if you go to that link, it will show you different types of um, um, examples for you to learn. So I put a couple of examples so that we can discuss in the class. For instance, let's say this is the example. You have a building here on, on top and you have a parking lot and, uh, and you have two ground sprout over there. So you wanted to design the infrastructure in a way that you could reduce, you know, you design the goal, whatever the goal would be, um, whether it's a water quality or quantity. But you know that 64% of this property is filled with uh, impervious surface that include building as well as parking lot. Um, and the total acreage is a three acre and the soil hydrology group is B. That means it's pretty conducting. Uh, why it is important? If it is conducting, that means you can have a permeable pavements. That means a natural soil can actually discharge or um, drain into ground. Uh, so, and then it says uh, permeable range is between 0 0.3 to 0 0.45 inch, which is pretty high for soil. Um, uh, then it says that bedrock was not observed in boring conducted on the side. So if there is no bedrock, that means you, know, you have infiltration into deeper ground. If there is a bedrock, the hydraulic conductivity may be high in the top, but as soon as you hit the bedrock, it's going to be very low. So that's why it's important to know, can it infiltrate? So the soil conditions, as you see in the, on the third column or rows, that's mostly about um, what kind of green infrastructure you can use. And it also says the topology or, uh, or topography. I uh, mean, you know, how, what's the direction of water flow if a drain drop appear there. So it shows that in the parking lot, uh, water is coming from both end and the center, it will, it will, it will mix and then will leave, this, leave the system. So you got to know which direction water is flowing so that you can strategically put the green space there. Um, and then, um, then it also says the now project goal. Its project goal is improve the condition to the stream directly south of the site by reducing the volume of runoff and pollute and loads entering the stream for water quality events. So it has both water quantity and quality. By just reducing water quantity, you are also taking away contaminated water from the system. So that means you are also decreasing the pollutions just by removing mass. Um, but then also, if you treat the contaminants as in the process that also add to the system. Um, so that's why, you know, you can think of, you know, can I put, um, you know, any kind of um, system in the, in the roadways, wherever you want to put. So you can go to that, and again, that link has all these sites, you know, you can check what they come up with. Um, so this is just an example. And why it is important, because if you go to that link, it will, it has many examples and you'll see how they change it, what they calculate, how they calculate all these numbers. And those are useful for your own site. If you have a, if you have a site, maybe you know one of the example is very similar to what you're designing. For instance, this one, if it is related to a school, the building, imagine this is a school as a parking lot. So from here, you can see those calculations. So I would say go there and check that. Um, then the second one, as I said, it says the pollutant removal processes, right? So you can decide what kind of what kind of uh, um, um, what kind of uh, BMP or green infrastructure you can put. So it shows that these are different options, but they choose infiltrators, swells, or strip and filters because constructed basin you don't have much space. Uh, it's very small space. So that's why it's too large to meet the space. It's written the constraint. Why you chose those three? It says exactly the reason. Uh, why you don't chose the other one? It is say that for instance, manufacture device, the reason they don't want it is because the site is not connected to the existing storm sewer system. 
Uh, so that's basically manufactured device is, is think of manhole or, or, a, or basically it's a place where you can remove the sediments. Um, so, and then another is harvesting and reuse. Uh, you know, you don't really need the reuse. It doesn't say that you have to reuse. There is a, there is a building, whether that building is going to use or not, it's, we don't know. So that's how they use this logic to decide which uh, green infrastructure to use. Once you have that one, determine the site constraint. Uh, one of the constraint is it's moving in the directions. Another constraint is uh, the space. You cannot use a space, a very spacious BMP. And you cannot also use um, uh, something like infiltration based BMP right near to the building because it will weaken the structure. Uh, so all that factor you have to account for. And then you have to see what's the regular requirement. Uh, is there anything uh, local, federal uh, level that you have to meet? And that's something you have to think. Once you have that one, then you say that, okay, let me convert some person is a permeable payments or permeable uh, parking lot. So in this case, um, because the flow, um, this you can see that flow was going from left side to center, right side to center. You can basically make the center portion, center strip into a permeable payment. And that way you can uh, save some cost. So that's what they did. As you see, that's the center portion uh, of the parking lot, wherever their car is going to park, they change it to permeable payments. The reason they don't change completely in the center, there is a strip there, is because car is going to drive there. And wherever there will be car driving, you'll you'll break those and uh, it will destroy it. So you don't want to um, have a permeable payments on the driving driveway. You only want to put in the car parking lot. Uh, so that's why they create that those permeable payments. Then they also created two grass channels because if you see the flow rate, how things are moving, um, they say if you put a center grass, um, then that means it can capture some of them. And the very bottom, there is an infiltration basin. The reason at the very bottom or southward infiltration basin is because of the other reason. Um, hold, hold on. Right, so <clears throat> the reason again um, we have the center is uh, all those storm water will get into this area, and you have this uh, permeable pavement so that it can capture it, and then you have this filter strip here because water is moving, some of the water is not going to be captured, so that means you can at the end you have ability to capture it uh, or uh, treat it before it releases into the stream. So the stream is here. It says the towards south. And then you have the grass strip here, um, so that, because uh, as I said, these are already uh, not impervious surface. So that means it has some treatment. You just have to make sure that uh, you create some channel so that it creates some depressed area to do uh, extra treatments. Um, so, Infiltration basins, all those things are given, and the, the the grass channels is used as a pretreatment. Grass channel is nothing; just removing the the sediments. It really doesn't do much. Um, slow down the flow. So that's why just for um, just for control, they put it there. Uh, so this is how you can decide, uh, and then you can use the the calculator. That's just one of the models that shows here. Uh, to calculate what's the amount of rainfall that receive in this area, what is the uh, retention goal, how much inch of water you are going to capture. And so you put all these value and get that, um, that um, performance level. Uh, so um, again, these are uh, just example you can check. Um, and I, I think this is just one example I gave you, uh, but they have like five or 10 of them. So go to this website the link I provide you, just check what kind of um, treatment concept they have, case studies. And those case studies are useful. Some of them might be very similar to what you are doing for your projects. And you might get some extra um, ideas to complete the draft. So having said that, uh, we'll discuss about the project after the class, uh, after the break. Um, but I want to just um, highlight a couple of things what I'm looking for in your projects. 
uh, first thing is very important to project is the story. Because you may you know, because there are like four or five or eight students, um, yeah, around eight students maximum in a project. So it's a challenge to come up with a story because eight different students are doing eight different things, you know, different part of it. Somebody has to make that effort to connect everything. So I really highly recommend that you, even you did your part, some small portion, read everything so that you can uh, integrate to the other part of the story. Nothing should just look like this is just there, didn't really connect with any other part. So then you have to remove that one to the appendix. Nothing is going to be destroyed, but at least your story has to be told. Um, then I'll look for if the story is uh, partially complete because um, this is a draft. I don't expect that everybody should be completely, you know, great draft. Uh, so if there is something missing, I will just mention that. And that this is maybe you need something here. So that's why I'm going to look for a gap. But at least your story has to be, you know, every person, something is written. You can't just leave everything, something completely out. Um, and then, um, a lot of times, usually it's not the gap I found. I found that there are lots of things guys wrote that's not probably necessary. Even the, my best intent, I try to uh, keep the focus. A lot of times you guys write a lot. So I will ask you to con make it more concise. So I'll give you a specific suggestion how to uh, do that. In most cases, I'll tell that this paragraph is just two details. It's not really connecting, or it's not necessary to write so much. So just move it to appendix. Um, then I look for the uh, non-concept materials, like something not science, more on technical writing. Um, I'll see how you write. A uh, lot of times I check you know, whether the sentence are clear, whether there is a topic sentence, whether you are, um, you know, how the sentence level structures are. So I'll give you some, I'm not gonna edit every sentence, but I'll edit extensively one or two paragraphs and I'll give you a lot of comment there saying that this is how you can change. Um, um, but uh, then you can apply that same concept for all the paragraphs. So those are mostly technical writing to make it more clear. Um, if you want to know how to write well or revise your writing, because uh, writing is not, writing is rewriting. You know, nobody write perfect sentence. They rewrite, read, rewrite, read, rewrite. And so that revision process is very important for every writers. Uh, the best writer even goes through that. Um, so I think you, if you really need to improve your writing, um, the book that I always, it helped me is, a, it's called Style, a Lesson in Clarity and Grace. So Style is the book name, and then it says Lesson in Grace, uh, Clarity and Grace. In Amazon, uh, you can buy that, it's pretty cheap. I don't buy the uh, um, newest versions, always buy the old, it's the same thing. Uh, I bought like 10th editions or something, uh, it has the same information. So it's really not, you may find the e-copy online somewhere. If you search, Google has everything. Um, so- um, uh, Professor? Yeah? I had a question about uh, the technical writing aspect yeah. of this project. Okay. Um, I've had previous teachers and professors say to, to avoid using personal like pronouns, like I, we, our, etc. Um, is that something that you are pretty adamant on too, or? No. or... I okay. think, you know, to me, uh, um, I mean, they might have a reason for it, um, but I, you know, I don't like the, you no, know, it's just a preference, you know, direct writing, uh, direct sentence are more clear, uh, but extensive use of you, I, you know, just find a way to see what's the subject range. A few times here and there, it's not a problem at all. Um, Got it, okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, mostly I look for the clarity, you know, how clear your sentences are. And it is, uh, I mean, there are clear writing, you know, there are like five or six things you can. So for instance, you know, if I um, see, I search style lesson in clarity and grace um, in Google, because I want to maybe have somewhere e-copy. So let me um, just, so that one of the page, um, <clears throat> I think, okay, so here it is. And I will um, share the screen um, so that you can see, um, this is the book. 
um, there's some clarity. And you see, these are the 10 different things they write you now. So this is what you distinguish real. I mean, no, that's not even a rule. Um, I mean, one thing you can make the sentence very clear by writing the subject very clear, subject, something character of the story. Uh, so for instance, storm water is the character. So you say storm water moves from A to B. If you say that in a uh, indirect way, you know, that's, that's uh, kind of unclear. So you got to get a sense of what's the characters and use action verb. That's the simplest thing to change. These two are the most important one. What character as a subject and what's your um, verb? Is this action verb? It's a direct verb. So those are important informations. Um, and then for understanding of any sentence, because you are reading, you are capturing information, always it's easier for the brain to have a known information at the beginning, uh, because then you can relate to what you already wrote. And then anything complex you put at the end. Uh, so uh, known information early, unknown letters. And then um, get to the main verb quickly, you know, in the sense that don't write unnecessarily long introductory sentence. Uh, don't write, um, you know, subject and verb and in between fill up something like this. For instance, I, my name, I'm here, blah, 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 does this one. By the time you go to the verb, you don't know who is doing this. Uh, so always keep them close to each other. Uh, so that means, you know, your subject will be very clear and verb will be action verb, they come together. So that's what says avoid interrupting the subject verb connections. Don't write too much things in between subject and verb. Post new and complex unit information towards the end. This is very similar to what's the uh, rule number four. Again, these are not rule per se. It's just the guidance to help you. Not necessarily you have to follow the rules, all of them. There are cases where you have to do something else. Um, and uh, if you're writing paragraphs, it's, it's, in, it's helpful if your if you're con information are consistent, you know, if a uh, consistent type of subject, that way it's kind of uh, helpful that you are, you are talking about storm water or wetland. Uh, you start with wetland, wetland does this, wetland does this, wetland has designed this. Uh, that way it's kind of easy for us to understand. And then uh, revision, uh, revise your sentence and look for anything unnecessary information, so unnecessary meaningless uh, clutter, repeated words, remove them, make the sentence leaner, then only the real meaning comes out naturally. Um, again, uh, uh, try to find, uh, you know, and one of the things that don't write negative one, negative sentence, write the affirmative way. For instance, I do not want to eat, um, I mean, two negatives, uh, that's kind of confusing. You know, so I can't example. Uh, so then there are some uh, other information. Um, don't stack more than one subordinate class. So that's just example, so that's fine. You know. But point is, what I'm trying to say is, these are the some guidance that helps writing clearly. I'm not expecting that you read the book in two days and improve it. This is just for your future. If ever you want to improve your um, revision skill, read this book buy this book, this is a very good book, I, and it really helped me a lot. And um, nobody write well uh, from the beginning. You revise looking at this one, and it's very hel helpful. Again, this is for revision, okay? Not help you to write, your brain is the what helps you write. Uh, this is more about what you write, whether it makes sense or not. Um, so that's the, again, um, the reason I want to say that is uh, you will be writing whether you work uh, in industry or in academia, you'll be writing your entire career, you know, that's report or emails. Um, clear writing really win you promotions. That's always the case. So make sure to develop technical writing skill. If you have not, it takes time. Nobody is perfect, so it will take years and years. So start writing and also start learning. Learning means start observing what's a good writing versus bad writing, and then you can start incorporating. By reading this book or some kind of guidance book, it helps you to know why. You know, because a lot of times it makes sense because it, it you hear it right, but you don't know exactly what's the reason. And particularly because English is my second language, I do um, you know it, I have to learn from the scratch. You know, I have to understand why, and that's the most important question I do all the time in my career. Anything I know, I want to know why. Why it is this and why it is that? You know. Uh, so technical writing all the time before even I 
I learned to write in English. I always thought, you know, it's a funny language. A lot of times, you know, so the grammars are not clear. You can do this one here, but at the same time, you can do that there. But then I read these books and other things. Then it makes sense, you know, because it's very logical. It evolves. Unlike other languages, English has been evolving with a different language. It integrates the um, history and think current events to change the language evolving over time. Uh, so that's why the, there is logic. It's just we didn't know. I didn't know that. You know? So that kind of book will be helpful. Uh, so having said that, um, you'll also have to cite references. That's something I'm very critical about. Uh, the reason is, um, you know, you you are required to re read research articles uh, when you have a statement or research or reports. Any times you make a statement that something you know, unless you know, for instance. Gravity makes things move downward. It's kind of a known already. It's not, it's a statement, but it's kind of a fact. But many other things, for instance, you say bioretention systems are good at removing heavy metals. How do I trust you? Now you got to find a, um, um, find a way to look for references. So in that way, you search bioinfiltration system, heavy metals. You find a couple of references in Google Scholar or uh, Web of Science read the first five or six one titles and abstract and you'll get a sense of which one is correct one then you cite that so it just shows that you are actually reading you know obviously in the real world you read the entire paper just to make sure but at least i want to make sure that you give that effort uh, because if you put a lot of citations uh, it does uh, indicates that you have done your research and it does look good uh, in uh, in technical writings and then um, this is optional. Next one, have you made necessary calculations? Not necessarily every project has to have calculation analysis. And if it is there, you know, you've got to explain it well. And what parameter you use, why you assume that those information has to be there. And then at the end, I look for a concise summary because you did all these projects, so what? Because you are trying to solve something. I Did you learn something? Or is this, you solve the problem or you didn't solve the problem? It's not required that you have to solve the problem, but it's required that you learn something because you approach, you know the problem or certain goals and you start with the process and then you write the entire process or work on it. You may or may not achieve the goal, but irrespective of that, you are going to learn. For instance, you say that I'm going to use wetland to remove certain things. At the end, you have to conclude whether that's effective or not, um, the either cost effective or, or it could be treatment effective. So you got to have some summary and a very concise paragraph. It's not same as abstract. It's more details of a, a conclusion. So I see this kind of structure. So I want to share this one with you so that uh, when you go revise your uh, draft um, before sending it to me, you just check this whether you have done that well or not. Again, draft stage, I don't take any point off. Um, uh, if, uh, uh, I mean, I is just when when I give you comment back, that's the time I check whether you address or not because um, then I expect you to actually change stuff if I have a comment or at least you have to explain why you didn't change. Um, that's how it goes in the real world. So I think that's all in terms of the um, uh, modeling and uh, report writing. What we'll do is. Uh, um, Oh, there is a question, is the highlight section mandatory? It's not mandatory, it's just the, uh, for research articles, some journals uh, ask it. So Renan or TA write it um, because if you're writing as a, turning your report into a journal article, this is something is helpful to have. So highlight is same as conclusion. It's just the main thing you write there in a very short way. And uh, it could be a bullet point for your conclusion of your slides. Okay, so I think that's all in terms of the project and um, modeling. And we will take a 12 minute break, 5.15, so we'll uh, resume. And, but when we come back, it's not like I have slides to present. It's mostly about discussion about your group's projects. Uh, so whoever want to leave is fine. Whoever want to ask project question, I will be here. So it's more like office hour now. Uh, we'll discuss and everybody can learn from the same process that we can see if, if it's applicable for your own project. Um, so that's all. Let me pause it.